come in, I'm Karina McFarlane. <laughs> I've lived in Santa Cruz for um, 20 years or something. And, and I've been tasked with introducing the evening because it was me that called Jim in from Washington State. And I'm just going to give you a little context for that. So <coughs> I, I've been hearing rumblings about the rail corridor and rail corridor use. And I eventually went along to some city council meetings and regional transport meetings and just sat in pretty much as a silent observer and viscerally in my body, I was, ha I was coming away with, uh, what, uh, this doesn't feel like democracy, like, what isn't being said here, or what's being said that we're not hearing, or why, why am I not grasping or grokking this situation, and um, how, how would I get yeah. to the bottom of that? And so, the other part of it for me was that, since I've lived here a long time and been involved in quite a lot of issues, I know a lot of the players for the rail corridor, for the people that feel that the train is the equitable solution and the people who don't. And they are good-hearted, civically involved, socially conscious, activist, amazing people in seeing from these perspectives. And I ended up calling Jim Ruff and saying, this seems to me the perfect thing for a dynamic facilitation process, a wisdom council process, um, because it's contentious, it's hard, it's difficult, it's polarizing. And DF, as dynamic facilitation is known around the world, is particularly good for something like that. And that was how this started to roll into place. And um, I have been tracking Jim Ruff's work for probably a decade. And there are many stories, but maybe the two most moving stories to me is in Austria. So when we had Women Rise for Global Peace in Santa Cruz, we started to have this thing that would our future really have the chance to change? If they changed the war room to the peace room, <laughs> would it change the trajectory of our lives? So in Austria, in this little region of Austria, somebody had the brilliant idea to create the Office for Future Related Issues. And out of that office, these people came forth looking for models that would really help deepen participatory democracy. And they found Jim Ruff in the USA, in, um, up there in uh, Washington State. And they trained with him and they took it back to Austria. And one of the most profoundly moving things is that they used it when they had an influx of Syrian refugees to the region and they were freaked out. And the joy and profundity of the process is that it allows for people to say, I am scared out of my wits, my way of life will be destroyed and blah, blah, blah. And then as that's able to be heard, then they can say, and we would like to have a humanitarian response to a displaced people, and it allows for that. One of the, th as I was building to this training in Santa Cruz, for Santa Cruz County residents, and Jim coming down, um, Ryan, my husband, was watching me attempt to say to people what, what it is, and he said, yeah, you, you really struggle with it that you can't, there's not really an elevator pitch for dynamic facilitation, is there? You can't re really, to get it, you have to have some sort of um, immer immersion somehow. And so Jim agreed to come down and we did, so we've done this two day intensive in this room. We have one more to go. Jim has taught this seminar worldwide in America and Europe, and it's a three day seminar I have the analogy, I, I used to make candles in Bonnie Doon, and when I first learned, Catherine said, you know, dip the candle, dip the candle, dip the candle, right, that's it, go home, sleep on it, and when you come back, you'll find you're actually quite good at dipping candles. And I think the same analogy applies here. And we, we slept on it, and we came back, and then we shared this morning, and people were saying, yeah, wasn't you getting it last night? And then I, and then I realized, that's 
what you were doing. And so we're teasing out all these threads and we, we're hoping to just have the raw aliveness of our energy from these two days just catch you that way, even for our insights where someone said, well, I've been facilitating for 30 years and this isn't that. And you said dynamic facilitation, but you're not really being dynamic, are you? Oh, and it turns out, no, the dynamic facilitation facilitator acts as a conduit, gets out the way, and to use Jim Ruff's language, brain on loan, I'm your servant, and you're trying to deal with getting all the threads out of a very contentious issue, and boom, here they start coming out on four different flip charts, concern and concerns and data and solutions and problem statement. So you come in with a problem statement and the person who's doing the dynamic facilitation is a facilitator for that. It's their job to catch the energy as it starts popping and flying and sparking you know, and, and in the room and like, oh, you have a concern. Oh, that's a data point. Oh, you had a solution right there, and that could come really fast, but put it on there. Yeah, well, that's never going to work. Oh, concern, like this. And so that's what's been happening in <laughs> these two days. And we're going to see if we can flavor that into all your bodies so that you can go home and sleep on it. And I will say, maybe analogies are the absolute best thing, because Jim gave an analogy yesterday that we all loved. <laughs> he said, he had two toilets in the house, and one was going flushing like this, and one was flushing like, like that. And it's like thinking, well, do I teach those water molecules how to flush like, like that? Or do I change the system, right? <laughs> change the system. So maybe we're just going to come up with lots of fabulous <coughs> analogies for why dynamic facilitation works in miraculous and marvelous ways. I know one dynamic facilitator on the East Coast, she says that clients most often say, you just worked a miracle, something that you were absolutely gridlocked for for eight months or something. And she says, there's nothing I love more than teaching people how I created the vessel for the meaning making so that then, it draws the wisdom that is innately in all of us. And part of the power of wisdom council in a jurisdiction is that you can randomly select a bunch of people, maybe 8 to 16 people, randomly select them, give them the data, and off they go for a day and a half usually. Come out with this, whew, they had shifts, they had breakthroughs, they had insights, they had revelations, and they feed that back to the community, and things start to blossom in ways that nobody could see before. So that's to give you an intro. Hi. <laughs> um, was there something else I wanted to say? Yes. Mm. That in a county the size of Santa Cruz, <coughs> one thing that we have as an advantage compared to some other places is that we do know the people on two sides of issues often. And we know that there is loving care on two sides of the issue that we can get to. And we have been deeply moved to already have enough opening to listen to those people who have different ideas than we have and care so much to get to the place where we acknowledge the beauty of somebody caring differently than we do. And that this is something entirely human, that every human has the ability to do. And why the random selection of people who don't already have engagement in an issue doesn't matter. Because once someone is engaged, and if they are authentically engaged, they will take on that best of human traits of caring the way that we all do. And the fact that it gets repeated and the same results happen for 25 years with this brilliant man's help to try it in multiple different circumstances is just so exciting. 
because that means we can create those improvements right here and repeat the experiments and get better and build and grow. And I had asked Karina to do it, but then I just did it standing next to her because she was so beautifully moved as she told us about why she was so passionate to keep going and finding more ways to draw in the different parts of our little area here with some really opposing issues recently that don't need to stay that way. And if you want to add anything else to that, I just want to make sure. <laughs> I will mention one other story from the Dynamic Facilitation Archives. The Syrian refugees coming into Austria was one, but the other one is a helpful one to realize that it's had huge impact in shaping uh, a community and it's kind of hidden when it happens like that. So it happened, any of you know Ashland, Oregon, you know it's a robust and fun and great city. And I always knew that, but I didn't know, even though I've been tracking this work, that something happened back there 10 years ago where they had a dynamic facilitation wisdom council. And out of that, they interviewed prospective mayors for city council and the one that got voted in was the one who listened. There, there were others who were there that they gave, the Wisdom Council gave, well, here's what's come up for us, and here's what feels really deeply, profoundly important to all our lives. They, and the, the candidates that couldn't hear them did not get voted <coughs> in. And so it changed the trajectory of Ashland. So that's another wonderful, but it's like it's hidden. So. These examples actually are all hidden in our world and one of the things that's magical is that what Jim had first envisioned was a constitutional amendment in the United States for this model of society's breakthrough that would really bring a we the people component for a true participatory democracy and that happened in a microcosm in one little region of Austria was so profound that they wrote it into their legislative process and the elected official, one elected official there said the power of the civic council is that stuff can walk out of their mouth that a politician can never say all the population say well yeah of course and then the public servants act like public servants and act upon it so that's what's happening in that region of Austria and that's the potential of speaking <coughs> here. And so I did say to Jim that um, don't be afraid of speaking microcosm, macrocosm, um, local to global, to an audience like Santa Cruz, because we can hear that. that there's something about we're sort of self-selected for that. So don't worry about bringing the global bit and freaking people out. I will also say about this training this weekend that um, people came down from... Auburn and New York City mm -hmm. and they were in our process and what we ended up doing because there were rail corridor people um, not knowing the issue or knowing the issue we ended up with one little wisdom council dynamic facilitation process on the rail corridor and then we had a whole list of other things like homelessness in Santa Cruz and this and that and and by some very fun, um, somebody threw a pen over their shoulder and hit whatever, and they ended up doing capitalism. <laughs> so they ended up being the two uh, little dynamic facilitation processes we had. And what we did was went into a round of trying it, came back, and Jim coming in and out to <coughs> each of our groups so that we could get it. And the whole purpose now, first I asked Jim to come and um, facilitate a rail corridor conversation, but out of that grew, it would be better if he let, let's treat a woman and a man to, to teach them to fish rather than come and do that thing for you. <laughs> come and train a bunch of people who can then practice and you can build a cadre of dynamic facilitation facilitators for Santa Cruz County. And that's what we've shown up for. So let's see. Manu, would you like to speak to, uh, so Manu, I was actually in Kathmandu when Manu signed up for this training and I was excited to have Manu sign up because only 
I've only known Manu for, from a distance, but I was so impressed when as a student he started the whole civonomics thing, and if any of you are familiar with that, it was also to help with participatory democracy. So I did a big cheer when Manu signed up for this training. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, like some kind of cosmic joke almost, like I didn't plan on facilitating tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that we should, um, because we can talk about the process as much as we want without doing it. <coughs> um, you, know, you won't all understand why we all think this is amazing and can change the world. Um, and, you know, Rick ex or, um, Jim explained a little bit about how the, the current system, it's, uh, it's really rigid in the way we just make decisions, right? I mean, even our elected officials, they vote yes or no. Um, they, we, we take good people and we put them through divisive elections that require as much money as they can to win often. And we just need a different way to make decisions. And then we put them in suits and we put them on podiums and people whisper in their ear on the best thing to do, and interest groups come, and they hold meetings, and people come and speak to them, but usually the only people that can show up are people who are paid to be there anyway. And then the two, two different sides, you know, try and rally their people to come and talk at those meetings, and so the public comment really just becomes an expression of the interest groups as well. And so we're not tapping into so much more of the population. And so, we, we have an opportunity to simply reimagine democracy as a group of people getting together and solving a problem. And we found when we started talking about the rail corridor that um, it was pretty easy <laughs> <laughs> uh, to, to come to solutions that you know, we felt pretty good about. Um, is this video set up? For, uh, for the other meeting, yeah, for the uh, video, the five minute video on the immigration. In Austria. Do we want to watch it? <coughs> yeah, I, think it I think it might be helpful to, to watch see it. it. Yeah, okay. it, it's to really help people tune in okay. to what we're talking about. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to jump up one more time because some of the language we were playing with and learning and relearning is instead of just saying problem solving, to really use this creative solution and creative choices, creating choices even, to the, the dynamic facilitation and dynamic. Um, democracy is creating lots of choices with no end. Just as human beings are endlessly creative, it's not just problem solving. It's wow when you when you have the creativity around the box instead of the box with creativity inside of it confining the creativity. It changes everything because the circle has unlimited ways to go out. So we must keep use, utilizing the changed language with each other in order to not shut ourselves down. And that was among the most exciting things that Jim embodied in all of his descriptions with us and why I keep jumping up. We're all imitating in new ways. <laughs> so, so just play it. I think it's simple. Okay, Alan, if I put the light off for this? Okay. I hope the sound is more. Oh, sure.
Ireland of Austria has gone on to institute every six months there's a civic council on a contentious <coughs> issue. And if a citizen feels like there's something that's not being addressed, they have to con um, collect just 1,000 signatures for a civic count, uh, extra civic council to be implemented. Yeah, it's a great system. I, I, I love the germs because they just like really laid it out methodically, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so I think that gives you sort of a pretty good conceptual idea of how we could implement it. And they have, the fact that they have this process written down, they have a constitutional amendment that we can learn from and implement is good, right? I mean, basically they created this democratic, uh, well, I mean, it's been, it's been coming along for a while. So anyway, that gives you a good conceptual understanding. Um, I think we should try doing it a little bit uh, on the rail corridor. Since it's, how, how many of you guys here know something about the rail corridor? <laughs> a lot. So we, I think we kind of showed up maybe to talk about this in a different way. Um, I was just part of an election where the rail corridor was brought before the people for the first time. This is a pretty important subject and the topic of our county, but it hasn't been really voted on. They kind of uh, put it in a sales tax measure from 2016 called Measure D. All right, how many of you guys are locals? You from Santa Cruz County? For most of us, yeah. Um, so anyway, so we have money from Measure D, and uh, $85 million over 30 years is for building a trail, and 40 million is for building a rail. Uh, these are probably facts that we should put down. Jim, do you want to lead us through a dynamic facilitation no, well, process? I think what I have is the, the, the wisdom count, you guys have pre did a pretend wisdom council, really. You've had two hours, two hours, and a little bit <coughs> to meet on the rail. Civic Grill. So take people through where your logic went and what your conclusions were. Oh, there are the two pages over there. The conclusion we came to here was that this process made it really easy for us to talk about it and kind of have next level thinking about the problem. Uh, and that ultimately we want to implement this. I mean, the, the, but Talking about the issue then wasn't a problem. I mean, in this case, you know, we're dealing with the RTC, which is a government agency, which is you know costly and difficult, and you know takes a lot of our time to deal with. So, how can we leverage uh, public just wisdom, I suppose, uh, into this process? And how can we um, deal deal with a government agency? I mean, the fact of the matter is that because they're uh, a public institution, um, you know, we, enough of us can just say we want to make this decision in a different way. And you don't, don't vote on any use of the rail corridor until people have had a chance to give public input in this way. I mean, and, and we, you know, currently they take public input, but through people submitting, writing their own letters and coming to meetings, and Becky knows all about that. <laughs> And you know, we stand there and we say a thing or two, and maybe it gets included in the report. But this is a way for us to become the report or the process again. Um, and so we think that it, of course, would be really useful on the issue of the rail corridor and uh, many more issues to come. And Jim, I really think we got to give these people. A <laughs> I mean, just there's an understanding of how we can communicate together as a group. Uh, um, <coughs> yeah, so what, uh, I mean, I'll stand and talk, but basically what wanted to happen, what, what we were thinking would happen, is that we didn't have a random group, so we had a group of people who cared about this issue. We were hoping to get one side and the other side, and then we would dynamically facilitate them to come up with some kind of unity. And so we started facilitating that process. I, I did it as a demo. And it was clear that one side was in the room, but the other side really wasn't. Mm -hmm. So it was a little bit of a struggle. Don't you think they're here now? 
Mm-hmm. Well, they might be, yeah, we can, I, I know you want me to do that, but I, I, mean, I will do something, but I want to I wanna be clear about, lay the ground a little bit more. So that, um, so that the, so what they did is that they worked on the issue and came, and the breakthrough was, it's really not, it's not a matter of us resolving that issue where everything's blocked anyway. <coughs> That was kind of the breakthrough. It's like, it's really about how do we, as a public, think through issues and make choices that are intelligent. That's what it's really about. And then, so the jump came from rail to no, no train to train, no train to train. That wasn't the issue. The issue became, let's have a different kind of thinking. And gee, we can step, we can do that. We can just set that up, the different kind of thinking. We don't need to get the permission of government. We don't need, in Austria, they do use government, the government did it. But it doesn't need to be the government. It can be just this group or, or a network of groups. So these are some of your, your words that, that the, uh, we realize that changing the system so solutions could be implemented is the real key. It's changing the solutions. And, and uh, there's a lot of frustration in the way it divides things and so forth. And so here's the plan that the, group, the small group who was working to resolve this difficult issue <coughs> came up with a plan. And the breakthrough was, let's set up a wisdom council process for the area, and they have a design of how to do that. I mean, how how that should be in among what three three areas? Well, I just agree with the problem here. The Wisdom Council unifying uh, the U- Wisdom Council process is unifying, expedient, low cost, and a fair way to solve complex local issues like the use of the rail corridor. We, the participants are inspired to identify a fiscal sponsor, randomly select Wisdom Council participants, and engage community stakeholders in supporting the outcomes. So that's, so the, so that's the breakthrough, is how to set that up, this local group. The other group was on <coughs> capitalism. And this is really a process about how do we solve and possibly solve problems. Well, the group working on capitalism, and with, I mean, I have, I have influenced it too much, I'm sure, but anyway, I think they, part of the group, certainly Angela and many others, were excited about the idea of a global wisdom council process. Because this is a process we can set up without anybody's permission. We can just set up a way to talk and they can make collective choices as a society, or we the people as a society. And what you're advocating is that I demonstrate dynamic facilitation, but I don't, honestly don't know that I can do so in the amount of time that we have. But I can tell you about that. Well, I mean, all we need is four people to take a <laughs> a dynamic facilitator, and you know, we do it for half an hour. I mean, obviously, you know, recommended length is a day and a half, apparently, but so we might not reach the kind of conclusions that we would otherwise, but. I think it's. A, I think it would be extremely helpful. Uh, how many people? You know, <laughs> <in this room? laughs> yeah, I don't know how to do it, but I, I can tra- 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 talk about it. I think. To me, the issue, the bottom line of what we're talking about, is um, I, I draw it like this. We have. Uh, we're talking about all levels of society. Individual, small group. Organization, community, <coughs> nation, world. Okay? Now, what's happened is that you and I are born into a system of thinking that was set up for us. And it's about judgment. It's about voting, for instance. It's about balance of powers. It's about checks and balances. It's about, it's, a, it's judgment. How many here know that if you have judgment in the room, you can't have a creative response? You can't be creative. 
that right? I mean, it's, they don't work. So we've structured the system of judgment as how we're going to think and talk and make, make decisions. And this is a process of decisions. Decision-making system. D means away. Decision means cut. Cut away. It means cut away the minority because we don't have to worry about them. Thank you. It means cut away our feelings because we're supposed to be rational. It means cut away the, the minority people, the minority voters, the minority. It means cut away. And so what we want to do is set up, there's another way of thinking that sometimes people talk about. It's kind of hidden. And that is, I call it choice creating. It's based on choice, not decision. The choice, the root for that is to taste. You're going to taste. So in a choice process, like, you know, we, we confuse these words, decision making and choice creating. But I know people in the environmental movement or in other kinds of things that are waiting. We can't make change until there's a crisis. You ever heard that? You can't really make change until there's a crisis. But what happens in a crisis? Something happens that we change our mindset and then we all work together. What, what was that? What was that that did that? That's what we need. We need to do that now. We need to do that now. We need to face that crisis now and spark that different kind of thinking that we all know exists. And that's what dynamic facilitation is trying to do, is to facilitate the kind of thinking that is what I call choice creating, and make a circle. Oh, thanks, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, so there's your decision making and your judgment and there's your creativity, but it's not head creativity. We're not talking brainstorming. We're talking the kind of creativity that happens when we're struggling with issues and, and somehow we just allow that emotion or emotions to be a part of, the, of, the, of what's going on and so forth. And the way what we're doing in this is we're, if we can facilitate that, one great thing about the word facilitation, one great thing about facilitation is that it's holistic. So we have a, a room full of people. We don't have to train you and then train you and then train you and then train you and get a critical mass and then maybe we can think better. The facilitator just does their magic, see? And the whole room automatically is thinking at a higher level. That's a, whole, that's a holistic approach. All we need is some kind of turbocharger to make that ability bigger. So we can do that for this county. So we can do that for the United States. So we can do that for California. So we can do that for the world. If you and I can facilitate just a few of us could facilitate somehow that turbocharged whole system rise in thinking. Then there's this we the people consciousness, this we the people that could come into being outside of the system. It could come into being. The way, the way we do it is we randomly select, maybe once every couple months, Pure random, mathematical, mathematically random. So many voters, so many registered voters, or, or maybe a different pool that, from a different pool. We randomly select people. We bring them together, just a few, 10 to 16 people. And does it work with people that have already some knowledge about the issue? Or it works with or without it. The only thing it doesn't work with is anybody who's not a real human. And that means a representative or somebody playing a role. Representatives are representing some constituency, they're not really people in the room. So, but if we randomly select, we don't get those people. We get an actual person. So it makes it a lot easier. And when you, ran, you randomly select people and they reach unity, and I mean unity like, holy smoke, we never would have gotten here without you being so different than me. 
when they get like that, you and I, just by facilitating this, have created a legitimate voice of we the people. It's a legitimate voice of we the people. We didn't, nobody gave us permission to do this. Nobody said, oh, well, geez, man, we'd like you to go out and facilitate the we the people because we want real democracy. No. You can just gather some money and some media support and whatever, and we can just go do it. And we can do it at any level. And we can do it right here. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you what I'm worried about. People don't know this. When I dynamically facilitate in a short time, they, they don't see process well enough to know what just happened. And there isn't time enough for me to bring that awareness. So that's what I'm concerned about. Is it, it isn't really uh, as effective as, as you're imagining. But if we have time, then, then it's a whole different thing. <coughs> but anyway, uh, Jerry, yeah, Jerry, you were going to say something. Yeah, I, I think it might be helpful to describe how some of the magic emerges. And the way I've perceived it this weekend is by having the facilitator is basically someone who gives you their full attention and really listens to what you have to say and tries to ha help you be as queer as possible in what, what it is that's coming from you. And these categories, data, information, head stuff, concerns, heart stuff, problem uh, uh, statements, oh, this is what's the matter. Solutions. Oh, our adaptability capabilities. I think it really calls from us all our capabilities, our full beings. And it also offers freedom. The freedom to fully be heard and to fully express yourself in a place of safety. And I think in that is the magic. And then, when it's combined you're mining the basic humanness of the group. The inherent wisdom that's in each of us is free to emerge. And when that happens singly, and then as groups, and it's all notated, everything that's brought forth is put up on the board. That's what all this writing is about. Everybody's concerns and data and problem solving and solutions. That's when your ingredients have assembled to make the stew that is the creative solution. And then there's a recognition that happens amongst the group as you go through this. Ah, that makes more sense. Ah, and the group comes to a consensus. So that, that I hope expresses some of the feel of what happens with the facilitation. Thank you. Okay, my name is... Yes, go ahead. Um, <coughs> my name is Ahmed, and I haven't been part of the training. I just dropped in tonight. Um, but my thinking is that if you have a society that works, you know, the, by the book, what the institution or what the city council has mandated, or when neighbors having a conflict about a dog and they will not be talking to each other rather than will call the police, then it is that type of mindset. But also there are issues where societies, the system broke down and the statehood itself broke down. So the community then faces a problem who maintain this peace and order it comes to, right? Because there's no police, there's no government, there's no rules. Uh, in that sense, it, it comes to the community itself then <coughs> to decide really what is good for the entire people. And that basically happens whether it is a tribal council who comes together. Someone is killed and maybe one clan killed two persons from the other side. So it's not the government that comes and just says, what we're going to do. But it's the clan elders come together and just say, then how we deal with this? So this conflict doesn't 
you know, go an entire election in a way. Though it happens in, in those communities when they break down. So, small villages or groups come together and then say, okay, we, the people, this council decides issues. And in that sense, the people share what they would be doing. So, and in the same systems where the government exists, then also there are that tribal council is, is still within the system. So if someone kills someone, the police can go and arrest that person, but if the tribal group sit <coughs> together and say, okay, we decided this guy will not be going to be killed or shot or to have a uh, life in prison, but we will go for blood compensation, basically saying that, okay, might be paid for 100 cows, and the entire tribe or the clan contributes, and then you know, that person's life is safe, and the conflict is stops in that sense. So, what I am coming, I talk a lot, but what I am coming to is that, when you have that frame of mind that saying, I call the police if I have issue with my neighbor's son or dog, what are you going to do, and how the people will solve the issue of the train, if, you know, the people themselves, would not be able to sit together and talk. So that mindset, how it can be uh, broken, and the people will be open to work out of the system in, in one way or another. That is all I just wanted to share, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> so I, we're talk, I know you, and I can, I can do something along this way, but so. Uh, <laughs> But that's the idea. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Is, is how, do, how is there some tribal council? Except in this case, the tribal council is all of us. All of us bringing together collective consciousness. So let's let's imagine how this would go with the the uh, trail. Building. Okay, what's in normal thinking? We would define the problem first, maybe. And this kind of thinking we tend to define the solution first. So what's the solution for? The rail trip. One is, Rick, you're one of the people. What's the what's the option that you're talking about? Uh, transit and bike and pedestrian trail. Transit and train. Oh, okay. Have the right of way. I try, I try to tell people to put it in, in full sentences. Um, but you can't read my reading, yeah, right? Include, so I apologize. Include transit and trail on the right of way. Okay. Include <coughs> transit and rails on trail. Trail. And trail. And tra what did I say? Oh, okay. oh, yeah. Transit and trail. On the right of way. Okay. And then I would have you. Tell me all the pieces of that and why that's true, and let's get some data up there and understand why that's the really best solution. You want to do that right now? What? You want me to do that? Uh, okay, give me a couple samples, but I don't want to talk time. I don't want to take time. Yeah, yeah. Um, just that it's, uh, it's, it's a, a potential uh, route for tr unencumbered, you know, transit vehicles that are unencumbered by tr uh, traffic. You know, such as they're encumbered in other city streets and highways. So okay, so we were going to provide a, a route that's unencumbered by traffic. Right. Uh, a, a, an opportunity for, for people, I guess. Okay. okay. Uh, within a, a, a dense, uh, densely populated area. In a densely populated area. Right. And I, I would agree that it needs okay, to be. Okay, time out. So you have a concern. I have a, I, I want to add to Rick's solution. Okay. Yes. Yeah. What would that be? Well, that it, um, you know, Rick started to say it, but it should be a continuous route, a continuous corridor, uh, art, okay. transportation, artery. You should be able to get on it and continue all the way across the county without stopping. Okay. Right? Does that sound Rick? Really kind of that that here was saying. Separate. No. Is that separate? Let me add it separately. So yeah, I'm, 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 I don't think that's like a core. Okay. So tell me, tell me again. 
Oh, yeah. So I mean, I'm just demonstrating. Sure. Something. So ahead, yeah. I think that if you wanted to build, for example, a, a highway or a subway, like, you know, for example, the, the greatest invention of uh, for trains uh, in the 19th century was the highway and the subway, the Hochbahn and the Untergrundbahn. Okay. I mean, we had electric subways under London by 1890, okay. right? This is transportation technology, yeah. is a continuous route. And that's the same thing we built with highways, is a continuous route across the county, you don't have to stop. And so, yeah. this, I think we can all agree that the solution for the rail corridor is a continuous route. Okay. So okay. So have a, be sure to have a continuous route. Now, what I'm not doing is really facilitating. I'm actually wanting to just show you what's happened here. Uh, I want to hear from Rick. I want to get his solution. I want to hear it fully. And somebody's going to get triggered by that. <laughs> and so I want to grab what that is. I don't want to lose that energy. I want that energy. So I want to pull it up here, and I want to have it part of the problem we're all facing and solving together. So I, I'm thrilled that that action is happening. And, and we're capturing that, and wherever we can put it, now it could have been a concern, but he framed it as an adding to what, he, what Rick was saying, and I didn't, but I, it would sounded good, and it might have worked, but just for safety's sake, at the beginning of, an, of a meeting like this, I, I just could have added several. Okay. But as we go on and get going, then it's just going to be easy to just blurt out stuff and we're not going to have a problem, right? It's just going to be blurting stuff out and we're going to, we're not going to, we're going to get this solution and then uh, over here comes the other solution that is the other team's solution and we're going to write that down, uh, whatever that is. Uh, what is that? Just give us some code words. Is anyone else? How Somebody else. A railway line, isn't it? A railway line? What? A, a railway line across the county. Okay. It? It's a have a railway line. And and we're gonna have some reasons why that's cool and whatever. And some more data. In other words, what we want is to be able to just all of a sudden you guys the the we've got the basic solutions. Here's the I think this is the one side and this is the other maybe. Is that right? The, are they opposite? No. Okay. Well, I don't even know. No. <laughs> well, tra transit is an inclusive uh, concept, right? It could be rail, uh, rail steel yeah. wheel vehicles. It could yeah. be bus. It could be something automated. Okay. All right. But yeah. I, I don't have time to really go into that. I just want to share a little bit of how it works that we would be able to start hearing from each voice and create a, a puzzle that everybody's facing this, we're not facing one another, we're facing, we're shoulder to shoulder, facing this issue, and we're, we get the basic answers, I call them the purge answers, the answers that are kind of clogging things up right now, we get them down there, and then there's a shift toward creativity after that. All right, so what else? What's another possibility? Or how, and how, and then so many people start thinking in a different, they start realizing, well, wait a minute, I don't even think that's the right problem. Mm -hmm. we've, we've been on the wrong problem. We're not really dealing with the rail to trail thing. We're dealing with the whole way of talking as a society about the making choices. And that's what this group did. They shifted from the rail to trail to, oh, the society is actually, as a society, we're not being intelligent and, and co-creative. We're not building community as we come up with the answers. Yeah. It's one of the examples from Austria, which is on Jim's um, website, Wise Democracy, about the different generations having a wisdom council on what happened during the Second World War when Nazi Germany happened. They had never had that conversation. And there were teenage girls that came out of the wisdom council and said, the elders have never spoken to us in this authentic way. We feel like we came alive in there today for the first time. And that, that's one of the power, core powers of this work. The shifts, the breakthroughs, the insights, the revelations, the quantum leaps. So are we going to unpack the railway? No. <laughs> 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 Bring that 
into more of a wisdom council with some of the things and be yeah. able to break up into groups. Yeah. I think that stuff's in a different room, but some of the things. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, because some of this stuff, I mean, I can share some of what I remember. I don't, I don't really know about this issue, but like some of the things that were super the creative that came out of it is like, well, what is the definition of a trail? You know, what is the right. definition of a trail? Like asking these questions of like, rather than do we change the whole, you know, are we changing the system? Are we changing the laws? Or what are the actual definitions and what are the definitions that actually serve like what we're doing? You know, and someone brought up about the future of more, you know, other other things that are happening, like electronic vehicles and electric bikes and things that didn't even exist when we start, just had the word trails. You think of hiking, but now there's lots of other vehicles that might be using trails. And so, you know, do we have to, re what do we have to do? Well, part of it is maybe we start redefining the words that we're using. You know, so it was, it was very creative stuff like that out of the box, you know, and then considerations around what, what surveys were already taken and how do we get inclusive for people that, that uh, you know, really didn't get to have their voice heard or really surveys who would be using, who would be using the trail. I didn't hear a lot of data about that, but, you know, more interesting ways possibly like this to survey more people. You know, did the surfers show up at the meeting? Like, who would be actually using the trail? I'm asking these questions as someone just moving to Santa Cruz. You know, like, who would be going from from Watsonville to Davenport? You know, is that a concern? Yeah. No, I feel like we <laughs> should put the papers. I mean, I feel like genius stuff already happened. If it's not a bad thing to show what we already did, it would be a way. No, it's funny. If it people are wanting to see it, what we did, we already did. It's it. Be judgments or you represent a government or organization, you're already not a person in, in the context of we the people. So I, the first question I have is how, how do you choose this group of 21 uh, by diversity, by race, by, uh, no, by gender, no. by age? How is that done just so that you start with uh, an experiment that's really representative? Yeah, it's not representative. You, what we do is we think of it as a process. So we're going to do this every ongoing, on an ongoing basis. So we have this system in place and it's in charge. You and I were born into it. And it's decision making, it's judgment. What we want to do is set up, or what I think the Wisdom Council process is, is you set we set up a choice creating conversation every so often among people, among a small group of people that's randomly selected. When I mean random, I mean mathematically random, no gender, no, no qualifications, no stratifying, just pure random so from problem. the citizen. That's what? the problem we got here, right, is do we select people from the voter rolls? Yeah, you need a pool, you define a pool to, ahead of time, yeah, you to define to a pool. Grab people. Can, so, can yeah. I speak to what I think he's okay, sure. trying to get at, because I, I, I had that <clears throat> concern as one of the only pers people of color in the room, and also as someone that doesn't really trust the system because, because I can't. <laughs> um, so it took me a little bit to get comfortable with this idea of having a random selection of people. And I'm even till just recently at dinner, it really gelled in my mind that the only time you have to worry about equity is when you're working within that square because that square is designed to not be equitable. But when you're outside of it, you really don't have to worry about it anymore. And it doesn't feel comfortable for me to even say that because I'm still like dealing with the idea. It's not really totally fully in there. But as I described to him after I left yesterday, I was feeling very unsettled because the only way I can understand this society is by knowing in my positionality is to be an outsider and to always be on the defense and to always be looking for conflict. 
and always be looking for how am I being excluded. I know I am for sure. I can just tell. <laughs> so it really required a certain sense of um, trust, trusting, but that didn't come right away. But the understanding that if you're outside of that contained square that is really the system <coughs> that kind of sets up this race-based sort of disparate treatment, then it then you don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> Which, Which is, is very liberating. <laughs> There's a level of listening that's happening that every voice is heard, you know, and that's part of what Sylvie's talking yeah, about. Yeah, so this is like, we've been set up with a game, the rules of the game. Uh, here's the box that we're, the collective decision gets made in this way. And, but there's actually a higher way that could be happening. If you and I could call, blow a whistle, okay, now we're step out of the game. We go, boy, let's get a beer, you know, and we all go and we talk, and we try and figure out what's best for everybody. And then we go back into the game. Well, we've, you and I were born into this game, and there's no time out. There's no way you get out of the game. We're stuck. Now what the key to getting out of the game is this distinction in my mind between decision making and choice creating. If we, you and I, if you can facilitate this room to be in the spirit of choice creating, that one in this room, if you're different, a minority for instance, you might get decided. You know, out. D means cut away. Decision. It's it's a judgmental process. So to, to make a decision on one of these solutions, then. So what? Like, yeah. So you would have five possible solutions, or two candidates, or something like that, and then you vote on the two. And so you make this judgment, and you call it democracy, and and then out of that, uh, you're. Upset, pissed off for another for four years, you know, and then till the next time, and then the other minority gets pissed off for four years. There is never this chance to step out of that into the whole system visit, where we all are trying to figure out what's best for everybody, and we set up the kind of system that can you know we can make changes. Once if you and I can set that up, that visit, that whole system visit. And we look around the virtual room and we realize, holy smoke, all of us are on the same page. And that's what the Wisdom Council can do, because we randomly select these people, and they reach unity like this. And it turns out when they present to the audience, <coughs> assemble just a few hundred people or a hundred people, the audience turns their chairs and talks, the Wisdom Council's done. The audience turns their chairs and they talk, and their answer is, and then you say, hey, how, how are you coming? What's your thought? And pretty much the audience says, yeah, we think so too. So how would we deal with conflict? Like, let's say, does someone actually want a railway? Like in the definition of the current RTC's proposal, just, I mean, just like of, of reusing the current freight tracks for a passenger train, who thinks that's a good idea? I like trains. Well, what? Yeah. What? <coughs> see that you're doing the opposite. You're doing decision making. You're facilitating decision making. Who thinks that's a good idea? I don't want to do that. I want to structure this other conversation. I'm just. I'm wondering if how, in dynamic facilitation, you would deal with disagreement. Well, the point is, is that the word "agree" will never be heard. We will facilitate a meeting among people that are supposedly in disagreement and they never <coughs> listen to you agree or disagree. Because we've shifted the mind to a state where we're trying to figure out what's best for everybody. And I think the, the glue from where I see it, the glue is the intent. And the intent is to find the best solution for the collective, not the individual. So that process of finding the best solution for the collective is what is unifying. And once you have 
once you feel a part of that process, then you don't ever, you don't have the desire to just be the one that dictates what happens anymore. Do you know what I'm saying? Is that, is that? Absolutely. I think you're here. You guys are, I love the way you talk, because it's, <coughs> everybody's talking in language that I didn't know. <laughs> That's, it is reminding me of building on a saying on the pioneer plenary stage. Design is the first signal of human intent. So this is a design and we know what the intent is. And that's how it becomes and feels so trustworthy. That's what happened to us. Well, say you did this whole process and you come up with this amazing solution that everybody in the room is all is happy about. It's for the best of everybody. But it wasn't initiated by some government entity. How do you move past group to who's the third group who brought the third group thank you that's great thank you so yeah so we we live in this box so we tend to think that the government you know and the box is you know uh, it, it, you know what the box looks like but I mean okay in my mind there's a constitution okay and then there's these I'm going to come to your question and then there's these branches of government trying to get out of your way. So there's branches of government. Okay, that's the next level. And then there's uh, laws somewhere in here, and then there's the people. And it seems like the people are at the bottom of the whole thing. Doesn't it seem that way? It seems like they're at the bottom. But actually, if you and I could facilitate the people to come together as one, Top. They trump the whole thing. It's true. They trump the whole thing. In other words, you look around the virtual room and you realize, wait a minute, we're all together on this. And elected officials jump. Because we've, mean, we've seen this happen in, in Austria especially. They, they don't even, they don't bring, the, they don't present. They do the wisdom council, it's really cool and everything. They don't really present to the people. This is, in my mind, the Wisdom Council's design is we randomly select and they present their conclusions to the people who say, yeah. Well, who's we? Well, we can be a few of us, you and me, with uh, about $3 million and a few uh, media friends and a couple yeah. celebrities and stuff. We can just kind of do this. Maybe we'll do it as a reality TV show, okay? <laughs> so you and I can facilitate this we the people to come into being. And all we do is start out by randomly selecting, actually randomly. We hire Gallup or some polling agency and they bring us random people. And then we facilitate them using dynamic facilitation because that gets them in the spirit of choice creating instead of decision making or negotiation, or dialogue, or mediation, or all these other kinds of thinking. They get them in the spirit of choice creating where they reach unity about what to do and what the perspective is. And they come on stage and they share their story about how they got there and what they got to. And the audience says, yeah. And then after a while, everybody begins to realize, wait a minute, there isn't any, there isn't any, we're, there's, no, there's no such thing as disagreement. We're not in this world. We're all just, everybody's pitching in trying to help build this even further. <laughs> And then there's this realization, just so you and I, over here, we, we the small we, create the we the people in this simple way. And just by understanding that this is a box that we were stuck in, a certain kind of thinking exclusively. It's a great kind of thinking, decision making. It's great. But it's, it's something we want to keep. We don't want to get rid of it. But there's uh, this other kind of we the people thinking, trying to find out what's best for everybody and coming to unity. That kind of thinking can be facilitated. And, but the, the question you asked was of legitimacy, right? Is how does this, like, who actually says that this group, that, you know, or this process is how we have our government? And that is where, you know, we can do a citizen's initiative collect some signatures and, say, and edit our constitution that says we want a regular citizens council or wisdom council, whatever you want to call it, to meet and discuss issues and, and any 
agency can submit an issue or people can submit an issue or whatever. And so we kind of we're going to change the Constitution here and we're going to do a big reality show for the whole country. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have to, you know, you and I don't want to think about this about how we want to do it because we have limited money, but yeah, we can do that kind of thing. It's about only the, only, once this, with this understanding, we can, we have an immense power for trade, immense power. And, and yeah. Uh, in terms of selecting randomly for who will be the council members, um, I am just thinking how if you select someone, a man who is doing, a single man who is doing two jobs to maintain a family, will be part of that and will have time for that random selection. Yeah. That is one issue. And also, when we have a voting, that happens only on Tuesdays. Yeah. And we never made it to happen on Sunday, yeah. Saturday and Sundays, yeah. then how, you know, random so selections would be able to fit to In this case, we're only getting... money for to be able to support those people to come? Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we can, we're only getting 24 people. We can beg them to come, we can uh, give them some money, we can give them babysitters, and we can do what we takes to get them to come. It's only a day and a half. It's a day and a half. It's actually a lot shorter than even like it's the jury selection process. I do understand. <laughs> what I'm saying is that someone who will let be given, yes. you know, a time to vote on Tuesday, which is national voting day, and it's mm -hmm. not even made a holiday, yeah. right. how then that person would be able to sit in a jury and make her it's not a jury. issue. It's just a day and a half. Yeah. We randomly select. We usually do it. We randomly select. If you were, if we get 24 people from the United States and we find them, chances are we can get them to come if they if they want to. And Jim actually has a great example that they did in um, mm -hmm. North Carolina, Asheville, where yeah. they gave them a stipend of $80 uh, to come. And because people came of um, small means and working two jobs and that kind of thing. Right. The, it took off in the conversation that we don't even know how we're going to make it. We've got two kids and we can't even pay the uh, electricity bill. And that became right. a wisdom council. Yeah. 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 Okay. Did you want to say something? Yeah, a few times. But, um, I was just going to comment earlier on the random aspect and or on your uh, comment earlier about how you got to feel safer and like the whole importance of whether we're really trying to represent a lot of diversity, or whether it's truly just random and could be very biased on one scale or the other. But um, the safe place about it all, which I think is the beauty of it, is that it's not about making a decision. It's not about, we're gonna vote on this, and then you're screwed if you didn't win or whatever. So I just wanted to remind us that it's, it's really about a safe place to explore um, who we are, who we can be, and, um, just getting, exercising the muscle of listening and expanding our perspective in a lot of ways. And I like that it's not decision making, voting, here we are together to close the door on something, right? So I think that's why it's so safe. Yeah. I, I think, Jim, you might add in the element of that you have a, this Wisdom Council that forms, does its process, but then it disappears, yeah. and another Wisdom Council forms. So there's that uh, additional element of randomness that comes. It's, it's a repeating process, and that Wisdom Council might look at, well, how are we doing on what happened? Uh, what, and it's, so it's a continuous process. It's not just a point in time. <coughs> and the ran, randomicity of it increases with, because it's that continuous process. Should, should the random people who are chosen know about what they are to discuss, and do they need to be other people introducing the scope of the discussion? Sometimes, but just very little. Just very little. What we really want is we want, the real wisdom council is everybody. In other words, this group, this random group, is merely the springboard to get the conversation among everybody, but to change the conversation so that it's, instead of it's like this, it's building. It's and it's we still have the box conversation of the red team and the blue team, 
But just in this brief period, well, the, the Wisdom Council operates, and, the, and then the next brief period, and the next brief period, but it generates a, an ongoing constitutional convention <coughs> that involves everybody. It's a we the people of all of us that's ongoing conversation that we're all in, that can set up, that has the power to set up and change and restructure our, our institutions, which are 230 years old. Hello. They didn't have uh, roads, let alone flush, I mean, you know, flush toilets, roads, nothing. Right. Internet, I mean, sorry. It was, it was developed, <laughs> developed during the Enlightenment period where people were trying to rationalize everything. I mean, in the height of this is Kant's categorical imperative, right? He tries to create a law for morality. And his law that he comes up with is do only what you would permit every other person to do. That's his law, whether you like it or not. But the point is that we think about government in the very same, same way. We elect people, they vote yes or no. We actually have parliamentary procedures, this thick book of rules, right, for how people can interact. And our entire system is built around it today, but no one actually knows how to use it. So we actually can't even really discuss <laughs> issues in this legal format anymore uh, at all. It's completely broken down. And that's why all our public officials, all they do is basically move the staff recommendation or run a very small change of it. And so essentially, you know, our democratic institutions fall apart and the staff is left trying to man the ship. And, you know, meanwhile, we spend billions of dollars on elections every couple of years, and we call it democracy. And we have to fundamentally change that. And, and what we've, we're seeing and we're learning in science in this century today is that actually we do have to create a hive mind where people come together and think together about issues. I mean, bees are able to solve, and even though their mind is like as small as a grain of sand, they can come together and figure out the, a complex problem, like where to build their next hive, like where it's got the best air circulation, where it's closest to water, and heat sources and food, and all this stuff, they can make a great decision. And that's essentially the same kind of thinking that we have to activate in our democracy. And so this is actually the new science of decision making and government. So did somebody do? Yeah, Sarah, you came in the room, and did you have thoughts or questions or pushback or celebration? or? <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, I can see how this can be very creative. Um, it's, a, it's a little unclear to me how it actually ends up impacting reality, okay, yeah. which I'm real hung up on these days, because I think we have very little time to address the, the two main crises that are facing us, rising fascism and rising climate impact. And so, you know, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm very concerned about things that can actually relate to, that can lead to yes. concrete changes quickly. Right. That are agreed on by large numbers of people. That we are, what, but you know, it really matters what facts you have. You know, what mm -hmm. fact, right now we're in a sea of lies and no one even knows what the facts are. Right. This is deadly. Yes. Yes. In terms of democracy. Yes. So I, I'm suggesting this is a solution to that. The problem you just got laid out is exact is the is a solution. I can't say the last solution. I keep doing that. People get mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but the uh, yeah. First of all, the issues you raise, I, I want to leave a little. These are the little. People want, I, I think they're going, the, the climate change, for instance. We can all pretend that they're local and they're solve them at the local level, but it, it really, I don't see how that works. This is about managing the global colonies and the system of management. We, we don't want it to be an authoritarian system. We want it to be a common sense visit. We want it to be real democracy, not the phony democracy, or I shouldn't say it that way, not the supposed democracy that we have today. We want actual, to invite everyone into the conversation and have the results be wise, and then have everyone in the conversation recognize, oh my goodness, we, we're all together on this. 
<coughs> I believe setting up a global wisdom council would not be hard. Would not be hard because there isn't anybody to resist it, for one thing. There's no global governance already out there. So you and I today could start developing this wisdom council, randomly selecting from the global public. Step one, there's like eight steps. Step one is to randomly select from the global, actually I gotta replace it, I gotta remember to select the issue, which might be climate change or might not, or, or something. And then step two is like randomly selecting like 10 to 16 people from the global population. And we hire that out to Gallup or some firm. We bring them together, we take their picture, because that's step one. And each step is a tremendous benefit to society, even if nobody, even if you don't believe that all eight steps together would solve this problem, it's each step by itself is a benefit. So one, step one is getting those people, taking their picture and saying, this is like Earth from space, this is uh, the first time we've ever gathered the global population in one, one room. It's a symbol, active symbol. And then we, step two is we put them in a room to work on this climate change or a rise of authoritarianism or poverty or whatever. Immigration, who knows? Diseases, fish, whatever. But <coughs> because we aren't dealing with anything. There's no global governance right now. That, I mean, nothing. That, the treaties that we're getting out of, that's it. Uh, so, the Wisdom Council then goes into a room and it basically comes up with unity. And it's amazing. So we got, okay, we got to need a lot of translators. We need, uh, we have different people from different cultures. We're lucky to get some from different North countries, not others. But it's, it's solvable. All these problems are solvable. You bring a group together, they reach, they will reach some kind of unity and they'll be excited. Every time, a wisdom council meets, they're excited. And they say, that what they, they don't understand it's about the process. They think, my God, how did you get these people together? How did you find these people? You know, they think it's about the people, which it is, but it's really about the process. So they come and they reach unity at step two, and then they walk on stage. And we have this room full of celebrities. <coughs> CNN, somehow media partner, CNN or I don't know who, The Guardian or New York Times or somebody is a part of with us. We've got them, we got them on board already. And they are we've got the cameras going around to the celebrities and saying, what are you thinking? And what are you thinking? And what are you thinking? And it turns out, in practice, pretty much people say, yeah, why are we doing that? And so what you're getting is a, first of all, you and I create this symbol. And then we have this celebrity audience, and the wisdom council's gone, but the celebrity audience is talking. And the, there's a broadcast audience that's also visiting and listening and talking to this. And then there's a web audience that's going. And then there's the ongoing audience of the whatever. And maybe it's smallish now. But still, everybody understands that for the first time in history, we have a legitimate voice of the people that's a legitimate voice of the public interest that's being expressed, and there's a very large support that's building. And then you and I do it again in a month, two months or something, and what we end up with is this system of economic, this capitalism, that we're beginning to transform, because just having this conversation, this we the people conversation, is the new economic system. Well, if politicians respond to it and <laughs> pick it up and talk about how they're going to do what the people said, then the people, in theory, should vote for them. Yeah, if they're mad, if a democratic company, country or whatever, <laughs> and if they're not, then that we work, they, even they respond. I mean, I, I have a feeling that some of these authoritarian leaders would jump on this, uh, like, as a way out, you know? But um, I don't know about that. But, but uh, but what we're doing is, to me, this is how you do a collective world global choice, not a decision, a choice at the global scale with huge numbers of people. But there isn't any, quote, disagreement. We can't, we won't, there isn't any disagreement. It's just a matter of getting more people uh, into the conversation. And if there was a disagreement, 
the media rushes to that person and says, oh my goodness, why, why are you disagreeing? Because we've got this, you know, what could you tell us about where, where you're coming from? Because now you're in the conversation too. And we can, we can, uh, we can move the next, the next time we do one. We've got this, oh, there were some other people that didn't, were on board before, so how do we, is there something there that we need to incorporate? In other words, we're, what we're doing is just setting up the new conversation. And if we can do that, if you and I could facilitate that conversation, then what we really establish is a different, is a, an economic system beyond capitalism. You've got capitalism, it's a game, it's a machine. It's just out there doing its thing. And all the players in this battle, which create cap, which create uh, your climate change, it's just this machine happening with where you maximize profits and you take these ordinary humans that want a job, want to make a living, whatever, drive with the other side. So they, they, they have to fit in there. They, we've, we're, we're destroying our people by putting them into this machine, really, that, where they have to, where they, to earn a living, they have to maybe addict people to some product or do some destroy the planet or whatever generate more consumption. So what we want to do is set up a system of talking where we say, oh no, let's set up some collective goals. Let's figure out how do we how do we pay for those? How do we how do we organize so that we can meet our collective goals? It's a different system of economics. Yeah, so so I think the challenge for right here, for right now in this room uh, is to go from the theory and the teaching of this model to how are we, this Wisdom Council, and how is this <coughs> time well spent actually connected to a, a viable solution? Because I think what we're in danger of right now is everybody feeling like, well, I'm putting in my time and I'm not getting somewhere. And that is the problem of the age we're in, the age of overload, the age of uh, our time is squandered in all these small ways into things that uh, we feel connected to but we don't feel in charge of. So as much as I value all the things you're, you're showing us here, I know that the emotion that I'm yeah. feeling with this process is that we're not grounded and that it's outside us in the world in some theoretical yeah. ability to solve some theoretical problem and we're missing this actual current opportunity and that's what we need to shift. We need to have this moment be the opportunity and this time be the time where we achieve our goal of participating in the solution. So we have two people that are two, we've got Angela saying she Four wants here. to be the organizer or set up for the global wisdom council process and we've got Manu and I think another, I don't know if you're alone or if there's a group that wants to work on the local wisdom council process and they actually have a strategy. And I, but I think what Son. Son just said is that this is a wisdom council and so we all need to feel like we came out of this like with the solutions that make us want to replicate this experience for other useful things and and issues in our world. <coughs> it's not out there, it's right here. Yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, it's Saturday night, you know, it's 10 to 9. We are <laughs> talking, you know, I gave, I, gave up, <laughs> I gave up dinner with my parents and my cousins to be here, yeah. right? Because I thought we could make something special happen. So, you know, so like, tell me what that, uh, so I, I've told you what, where I think we are. We've got Manu and the local, and we are coordinating that. We've got another day here to work on it. And then we've got um, Angela saying she's going to create a team to look at the global. That's a that's a start. Is there? So the solution you? is Wisdom Council. That's that's our solution. That's wisdom yeah. Council. Well, just it takes some time. Is the point. I hear that's you. Why it's hard I'm to do I'm trying to help summarize now. to give us this feeling of success and accomplishment. Yeah. Right. right? Yeah. That we're here. So we're, we're our time we're, isn't wasted. It's right. actually getting us where we want to go. And, and if we're not having a Wisdom Council now, what are we having <laughs> the next Wisdom Council? I think part of it is that there were ideas, you know, that came up in the DF that you did around the train. There were ideas and things that came up 
that could be put to this group and the group could still break up, like what a wisdom council is, is kind of what I thought we were going to do, and let more people have a voice around the small table, you know, from some of like where we got. But if we're the only place the team got to was a wisdom council, then we're a little bit stuck, right? Because everyone doesn't, we're not going to, we're not, we're in a wisdom council, but we're not. So I wonder if the, your team that, that brainstormed this plus what we did as a larger group have some things that were some of the me, like redefine the word trainer, like things that other people can chew on or add to, because most of the people here seem to be engaged in this topic of the train red, red. Oh, so, yeah, so I, so I want to be respectful of people's time and just see whether there's any last thing that anybody wants to say. Um, I can, my number is out on all the information if anybody wants to get in touch with me. This is a, it was a real triumph to get Jim down from Washington State and this is something that's being birthed in quite a handful of people locally and it's not going to go away. That's the thing that I can say about that. Okay. So I can easily visualize a wisdom council. What I'm having trouble with is what the wisdom council would come up with and implementing that within the government as it exists. Other than forming citizens' initiatives and getting that on the ballot, then we're back again to this, you know, buddy and money and all of that. <coughs> how, you know, how did, you know, obviously the government of Austria was a lot more receptive to trying something new. I don't see that happening here very easily. You know, the Wisdom Council could go to the Board of Supervisors meeting, you'd be given three minutes, your time is up, thank you very much, and they don't care. So you're imagining that the top authority is, this, is the government. Yeah. You're imagining that the government is somehow in charge. Because they control the money. So well, okay, they control the money right now. But I'm talking about how is it possible that you and I could facilitate, first of all, this facilitation Yes, the government controls the money and they, they basically make the decisions around the laws, right? The laws. And in terms of the priorities of this, laws are way down the list. In terms of solving the problems, we, building a shared vision is something that can't happen in our society. Changing the public conversation is something that can't happen in our society. We, our public conversation is this. We, we're, we're divided as a nation, making room for authoritarian governments. Creating a we the people, which comes at times, which is a theoretical idea, but really that's the real authority. If you and I could facilitate that, that's the real authority. So, I mean, it's to me, it's like we can do all this other stuff, and I can't remember who they are, all of them, but, but the laws are not how we solve problems. It's just how we solve them currently. You know, well, okay, we've got this abortion and it turns into pro-life, pro-choice. What a stupid idea to argue that. It's really about how do we help children not to be born into families that want to love them. How do we do that? Well, we don't even think about that. We're just doing this argument between pro-life and pro-choice. How did we get shepherded and, you know, ramrodded into that? Yeah. Could, I, could I just make one more comment? In the interest of the hour, yeah. I, I obviously just came to this evening session and I can see from all of the work here that everybody's been working really hard and actually has been feeling incredibly uh, gifted and lifted to the, to the emotions that you've been talking about. And I think that what would make this evening a success is for everybody to uh, uh, affirm their participation in this wisdom council and say yes and we're it's late and we're tired and maybe we've gone too far on one day and we're like covering the same ground and it doesn't feel like we're getting anywhere but the real thing that this conversation I think has to give each participant and that they can then take to their individual groups is the feeling of success that getting something off your chest and being heard 
is actually a step in the right direction. And then learning what the process is to take the next step after that is the solution. And the process that we're talking about here is actually a, a, a skeleton for that solution that shows it in its completion. But as a wisdom council, we just spent one day learning what it is and taking the first step. So let's feel good about that. Council 
in Rogue Valley. And it's a cool, um, that's a cool one on the website because it shows the Wisdom Council that happened that changed how the mayor was elected in the city of Ashland because the, of the way the Wisdom Council interviewed the prospective mayors for the city and voted for the mayor that really listened. And then seven years later, so it's a, re a Republican politician, former politician from Georgia, Joseph McCormick, he was doing a film called Democracy in America, and he heard about Jim Ruff and this Dynamic Facilitation Wisdom Council in Ashland, Oregon, and he drove across country to film it. And he was so impressed that he came back seven years later to see how they were doing. That is on Jim's website, Wise Democracy, and it's a non-profit website. So there's lots of, there's actually a lot of um, video footage on there from Austria and from um, North Carolina, Asheville, from Oregon, Ashland. So it's a good where, place to troll around. Where is the content from? Wise Democracy. Wise Democracy. No, I know, I'm looking at it. I'm just looking, where, where is the content You go to Oregon? Wisdom Council and then Wisdom Council Examples, I think. It's got a drop down menu. But nothing has really, there's been no traction in the US. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I'm hoping that we can do that. It, you know, it just hasn't. First of all, we didn't understand what well, we understand now, too. So we didn't have enough experience. We, we haven't had any money. We just we just set it up with volunteer groups, you know. And uh, in Ashland, Oregon, we never had any, you know, none of the political leaders. We didn't have the media support. We didn't. But it, it made a difference in ways that we didn't understand. It, the, uh, the people kept meeting after the wisdom council, and that's when all these changes started happening. They started generating interest in changing the state, the city charter, realizing that this really the way the people kind of thing. And it turns out there was a bunch of people that wanted to change the city charter, and it was just and it was going to be ignored. It was all set to go, and then these people got enlivened and prevented those changes and basically voted the people out that were pushing it for it and it was just a whole transformation I guess. So there's a video of there of Joseph explaining all that because he went back and actually lived in Ashland. Joseph yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Joseph was a right wing nutcase in the uh, uh, Georgia politics. He was the a candidate, a Republican candidate for the House of Representatives from uh, Georgia in Jimmy Carter's district, and he lost his election. And he got it that he was being unethical, and he it just the whole system was unethical, and he didn't like it. And he went and spent a year or so in kind of a reclusive attitude in in uh, Virginia. And then somebody handed him a book, I guess, and and then he got excited and called me about doing something, and I told him what we were doing, so he came out and filmed it. And, made, and the film, the little film, is on the, on the website. Uh, and this is Jim, and you probably don't want me to hold up this book because it's 20 years old, but I love that the subtitle of Society's Breakthrough is Releasing Essential Wisdom and Virtue in All the People. Mm -hmm. And that is the intent of the design. Yeah. And want to be respectful of your time. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of those books for sale. <laughs> <laughs>